look, I know everyone said it, but I can't get the name of this movie right. I keep wanting to say Bad Boys for Life, but Bad Boys for Life was number three, and then number four is Ride or Die. I don't know. They didn't know they were making a fourth movie, but that's just a missed opportunity. Shut up! What's up, Flick fans? Welcome back to the channel. Bad Boys, Ride or Die. That's the name. Is here. Let's talk. Come on, Mike. Slow down. We are late. My stomach, Mike. I need a ginger ale. When their former captain is implicated in corruption, our two Miami police officers have to work to clear his name. This movie is rated R. It stars Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. And of course, there's violence, language, some references, things that you see in all of the Bad Boys movies. I love the fact that they're sticking with that R rating because the last movie did very well. No, Michael Bay is no longer our director, but our two directors here did a great job with the last one, both emulating Michael Bay's style, but also putting their own spin on it. Then they went on to do Miss Marvel and then Batgirl Girl, which we'll never see. What do you what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? But I watched the films they've been a part of. At least the direction for Batgirl had to be good. The look and feel of a Miss Marvel is great. Maybe those projects didn't have the best script. We'll never know for Batgirl. But for something like the new Spider-Man movie that they're in talks for, I, I would like to see that. Maybe in Bad Boys 5 they can give Will Smith spider powers and they can test out the web swinging. That'd be cool. Okay, guy, settle down. Here's my thing about the Bad Boys franchise. I was never the biggest fan, right? So many people love Bad Boys 2. I think it's an entertaining movie, but I've always had somewhat of an issue with not being invested in the story and not caring about the villainous side of things and really just being entertained by Martin Lawrence and Will Smith. They are great on screen together. Some of the best buddy cop chemistry we've ever seen. That's why these movies work. But uh, bringing in a new directing duo, even though Michael Bay brought a very distinct style to these movies, was a good idea because they were able to take that, like I said, emulate it, but inject their own style into it. And in this fourth movie, I think it's becoming, at least this franchise, more of their own baby. Because this is distinctly different from the last three Bad Boys movies in terms of bringing some new things to the table, some things that work, and some things that feel a little out of place. Odd example, what Marcus goes through at the beginning of this film, and there's a spiritual look and feel to something that his character is going through, and the way they showcase that on screen, I'm like, that's interesting. It doesn't really feel like it fits in a Bad Boys movie, but I see what they're trying to do. At least they're trying to give these aging heroes a reason to feel relatable. It's not just outlandish, even though we get that action sequences right. Uh, they're getting older, therefore they're dealing with things like what Marcus goes through at the beginning, or even what Mike is going through throughout this movie, giving him a little bit of anxiety and trying to deal with those things that he's never faced before, because that's something that comes with age. As I always say in sports in the NFL. Father time wins out no matter what. And that's the case with our two heroes, even though they're still doing some really badass things. Watch your profanity. And so Marcus, he's a family man. We know that he's got his big family to deal with. Mike, being Marcus's brother, basically, is just now uh, getting into that side of his life. Now, that is something I wish they could have explored more because we start this movie out with him starting his new journey without spoil. Is that a spoiler? I, I ain't saying it. But they introduced that. I'm sure it'll be a big plot point eventually, yet I did not feel like they explored that side of him enough, even though it becomes integral in the third act of the film. Uh, that being said, it gives them yet another thing to deal with, while the main plot point of the corruption within this huge organization kind of spawning off the death of our captain in the last movie, but now there's another level to that, and it goes deeper. And I like how they took uh, one of those big plot points from the last film, tied it heavily into this one, one and went in a new direction because the bad boys, well, they've always been the bad boys, yet they're good boys. Good, bad, bad, good. Who's a good boy? That's stupid. I'm leaving it in, though. I'm not taking it out. The bad boys are being framed, so now they really are bad boys. And even people that they trust in their lives, they don't know whether or not to trust them at this point uh, because it's so convincing, the evidence that these other characters have is so convincing against them. And I do like how they're building this world in a way that connects the dots, connects characters to each other, both from other movies and, of course, in our last film, this new team-ish 
team that they establish with our characters, Vanessa Hudgens, Alexander Ludwig. You still have our character in Rita, who's taken a higher position now. And so I really like what they did with not only our main two, but some of the side characters on the good side of things. And then those who just don't really know what to feel about this situation, because we know, at least we think we know, that Captain Howard is innocent, but it goes deeper than even we expect. So in that way, and how they keep building onto this world and this lore and a lot of people involved, it's kind of starting to feel like a Fast and Furious franchise type of thing. Except, as you know, I haven't really been a fan of the last several Fast and Furious movies. I am a fan of this movie. And I am a fan of this franchise and where it's going. I like how we're expanding. It's not just our two bad boys. There are more people involved now. But I just think this is a really entertaining group of movies at this point. And they've built in the way that they needed to. These characters are aging and they're showcasing that. But also giving us some things to really think about when it comes to where these characters are in their lives. And Bad Boys Ride or Die is a good time because of that. Now, is it the most fleshed out plot I've ever seen? Is it the best set of villains we've ever seen? I'll talk about that side here in just a second. No. No. But when things start to slow down in this film, and they do at point, they really pick it up and elevate it with the action and some of these action sequences we saw the behind the scenes thing and how they're filming some of these first person POV and you know some people could look at that as a shtick and I get it but at least they're injecting some style into these movies some style that we haven't really seen before now if you're a fan of this franchise then you may be like ah that doesn't belong in here but if you're like me and you're kind of a fresh fan then I'm like, yeah, let's let's keep changing it up and doing something different. And they did that. And this feels more like their movie than a Michael Bay movie, whereas the last film felt like a bit of both. And so I appreciate that as well as every time I started to be like, all right, can we speed this up? It would pick back up and we'd get a cool action scene, some that are a little outlandish. Now, it's not full Fast and Furious. We're not fully going to space here. OK, when I say outlandish just for the bad boys movies, I'm like, how could we have survived that? How are you going to get shot that many times? Why is there a, a crocodile all of a sudden? So some things in here that were a little out there and didn't fully work with the story. And then our villainous side of things. Not only whoever is pulling the strings on the inside, but the person that were with the guy who's, you know, big and menacing and he's doing some really bad things at the beginning. But that's all we know about him. Like, this is one of the most poorly fleshed out, just talking this character, villain that I have seen in an action movie in quite some time. When I say he got nothing to do other than be a generic bad guy, he got nothing to do. Nothing. And it's a similar issue to what I have with the first two Bad Boys movies. I just never really got into the villains, at least in the last one. They gave it a personal connection to Smith's character, to Mike, and that personal connection is still here because his son is still a big part of this movie and family is now something that's on his side of things. But that villain is bad. This is bad. This is very, Steven very bad. And so I'm divided on that side of the story. The corruption side of things was really interesting. A nice twist and spin on this franchise. The actual villains are just so generic and eye-rolling and just poorly written. I didn't care. It was more some of the people that we cared about and their side stories. Like an Armando or a Judy, played by Rhea Seahorn. She has a nice little subplot in here. Great actress, by the way. So it's a freaking entertaining movie, man. You know what you're in for with a Bad Boys movie at this point. So if you want that, you're gonna get it. A bit of a different kind of story. And for the most part, entertainment and solid direction. Also, Reggie, yeah, that Reggie, what he gets to do in this movie, it's surprising, hilarious, and maybe the best moment in the franchise. <laughs> Before I give you my score, who's your bad boy for life? That's not the name of this one. And uh, if you guys want to follow our podcast, the Movie Mode Pod, search us up on YouTube, all podcasting platforms. Uh, you can follow along. Episode 3 is dropping this weekend, and I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about this movie. Also, drop a like if you enjoy this. Ride or Die is an absolute blast. Mike and Marcus have some interesting personal drama in this entry that continues to expand upon their characters, as well as the usual fantastic chemistry between the two. While the villainous side of the story is generic and poorly fleshed out, the idea of framing our heroes adds a sense of urgency to this story that will keep you invested. Arby and Fala are perfect for this franchise. I hope they keep it up. I want to see more. Unlike Fast and Furious, I, I want movie after movie. If they can keep this going and give us something moderately interesting uh, for every movie, because again, the plot doesn't matter as much. It's more about the chemistry and the characters. So thank you so much for watching. 
I enjoy this franchise now. I'd say I'm a bad boys fan, and I am a bad boy for life, or I will ride or die, whatever the name is. All right, see you soon.